Good morning, everyone. My name is Mighty Stream, and I'm going to do your May the 17th just for today in a meditation. If you need to reach me, feel free to do so at recoveryofhope21 at gmail.com. I hope you're doing good this morning out there, wherever you are. Thank you for listening. Share this podcast with your friends. All right. Like and subscribe. Tell them to subscribe, okay? So they can get it every day. All right. The title of the meditation. Oh, my goodness. I need some coffee for this one. It is entitled (laughs) Defects. Oh, Mm, mm, mm. seems like we have been on this all week. All month. I wonder if each month has a topic. Okay, let's go, guys. Defects. We were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. Step six. After taking the fifth step, many of us spend some time considering the exact nature of our wrongs and the part that excuse me, and the part they'd play in making us who we are, were. I can't even get it out. I don't know about this meditation today, guys. I cannot even get the first sentence out. This might not be good. (laughs) All right, I'm going to redo it just because I love you guys. Uh, Just because I love you guys. I want to be transparent. I'm not looking for perfection, just progress, right, guys? (laughs) The first sentence out the gate is horrible. Okay. After taking the first step, many of us spend some time considering the exact nature of our wrongs and the part they'd played in making us who we were. Boom. I got that out. What would our lives be like without, say, our arrogance. Sure, arrogance had kept us apart from our fellows, preventing us from enjoying and learning from them. But arrogance had also served us well, propping up our ego in the face of critically low self-esteem. What advantage would be gained if our arrogance were removed? And what support would we be left with? That's a good question. With arrogance gone, we would be one step closer to being restored to our proper place among others. We would become capable of appreciating their company and their wisdom and their challenges as their equals. Our support and guidance would come if we choose from the care offered us by our higher power, low self-esteem would cease to be an issue. One by one, we examined our character defects this way and found them all defective. After all, that's why they're called defects. And were we entirely ready? To have God remove all of them? Yes. Just for today, I will thoroughly consider all my defects of character to discover whether I am ready to have the God of my understanding remove them. Let's take a moment of silence followed by the wee version of the serenity prayer. Moment of silence now, please. Thank you. God, grant us the serenity to accept the things that we cannot change, the courage to change the things that we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Just for today, please and thank you. What a wonderful meditation. Defects. We were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. And I think the the main theme of this is that after doing the fifth step, we spend some time, right? 
considering the exact nature. Because now we're going into the sixth step. We're looking at the exact nature of our wrongs and the part that they played in making us who we were. And so as we go into that sixth step, becoming entirely ready, right? To have God remove all these defects of character. Not even becoming, it says we were entirely ready. So now after analyzing these moments of uh, where our exact nature surfaced. Okay, so I did that because I'm arrogant. But why am I arrogant? And you can stop there. You can say arrogance is a defect of character. You can say that, right? But behind the arrogance, there's usually something else. Maybe it's fear. Maybe you're operating out of fear of people hurting you. And so in order for you to handle situations and protect yourself, fix, match, and control everything, you need to be arrogant. I don't know who you're talking to. Look, let me tell you something. Don't ever, and I do mean ever, speak to me like that. Okay, now you can say that in a different way. That's not arrogant. I wanted to talk to you about what you just said, right? Because I feel that was very disrespectful considering I'm your parent and I provide everything for you. You might wanna go to your room and think about how you're gonna be talking to me because I didn't come this far in life to allow my child to disrespect me. You need to think about that because I won't tolerate it. You see, I said the same exact thing, but with different tones, with a different spirit underneath it, because arrogance gets you nowhere. It gets you people hopping and jumping and doing what you want them to do, but they also start to hate you and not want to be bothered with you, right? So maybe the arrogance has something else behind it. Now I have to protect myself. I need to make sure I check everything that tries to cross the line. However, after you analyze it and you see what arrogance actually is doing, right? And sometimes it's easier to look at what would your life be like if it wasn't there? Well, people would be more apt to be friendly with me. People would want to have discussions with me. I would ask for higher powers direction, which I'm saying I've already done from the third step, but I would actually do it now because I don't believe I have all the answers and I don't feel that I need to stand up for myself and, and stand for non-existent virtues now. I believe that I have a higher power that can handle all of that. All I need to do is turn my will and my life over to the care of the God of my own understanding. Now, I, is that making sense? I'm hoping it makes sense because I know for a fact that this is talking about me. I know for a fact. And it gives us the sweetness of being able to say, well, with it gone, let's look at that. I would be restored to my what? My proper place among others. Can you imagine that we would be out of a proper place among people because of a character defect like arrogance? Absolutely. Who wants to be bothered with an arrogant person? They will deal with you if, they, if, if their paycheck is attached to it, if their housing is attached to it, they will deal with your arrogance. However, in the fellowship, nobody has to deal with me. No one has to have anything to do with me. This is an anonymous program. Once I leave that meeting, I don't need to know you and you don't need to know me. But if a person chooses to fellowship with you, if a person asks you to sponsor you, uh, asks you to sponsor them rather, so if they're looking for intimacy with you, relationship with you, right? Now there's this sense of well-being and fellowship and connectedness. But the minute you start showing who you are, that arrogance, 
and always trying to dominate the conversation. Nothing they say is worth hearing. You cut them off mid-conversation with what you think they need to do or what they're doing. You're condescending. Your way or the highway? No, they won't. They won't. People will not want to be bothered and you will be out of place out of your proper place among others because you're trying to, through this defense mechanism, set yourself up higher as superior, but in reality, you feel inferior. So you got two faces, but one heart. You're pretending to be something that you're not because that heart is not healed. Oh, I could talk forever in a day. And yeah, I might have messed up on the first sentence, but I'm on a I'm on a steamroll right now. I could talk about this all day. This is a beautiful meditation. This is again a five star. This is one of those meditations you write in the back of your basic text and say step six, C just for today, May 17th. It's one of those things that you want to keep as a tool in your tool belt. My name is Mighty Stream. I've enjoyed you today and I hope that you've enjoyed the podcast today. I hope that we all can walk away knowing that today, just for today, we're going to thoroughly consider all my defects of character to discover whether I'm ready to have the God of my understanding remove them. Hopefully your answer is yes. Mine is. My answer is yes. Take them all. These defects, take them all because In regards to step seven, they're causing me to fall short. They're causing me to have shortcomings. And these shortcomings are causing me to be less connected to humanity and the people that I love. And the people I love are also humans. I do want to put that in there, right? It's causing me to have wonderful fellowship. right? If I can, if I've said that right, if I can get the shortcomings removed, my relationship with the people I love, with humanity, will be restored. Having them is causing me to not have relationship with the people I love, with humanity. So yes, I'm ready. I hope you're ready. Let's go for it. May 17th, get out there and allow your higher power to reveal to you how these character defects are operative and how they still need to be removed from you. My name is Mighty Stream. I've enjoyed talking to you and I will be talking to you tomorrow.